Hi, I'm Becca Miller. I'm an associate professor at the Yale University School of Medicine in the Department of Psychiatry. I'm a single mom with a nine-year-old daughter and I live in New Haven, Connecticut. My life was pretty normal, average suburban life until second grade when my dad switched jobs and started working for Chase Manhattan Bank and moved our family to Liberia, West Africa for a year and a half. And that really gave me a much different perspective on the world that we live in after getting back. I went through high school and ended up going to Oberlin College for my first year, then transferred to Barnard College. And really that developed my interest in psychology. I really wanted to understand what had happened to me and to try and help other people. Helping other people. It's a theme that will repeat several times in Becca's journey with mental illness and Parkinson's disease. I went to graduate school at LIU Brooklyn and was working on my clinical psychology PhD. You know, during that time, I had been dating, I had been looking for a partner, and had never managed to find someone that I really wanted to have a relationship with. But I knew that I really wanted kids. So when I was 37, I decided to start trying to have a kid on my own with the donor. And finally got pregnant at 38. I was very lucky um, and was super excited to be pregnant with a beautiful little girl. It was at this time in Becca's life that she noticed something was not quite right. You know, during my pregnancy, I first started noticing that I had what I thought was carpal tunnel. My hand wouldn't, my right hand wouldn't move very well. You know, being a psychologist, I of course attributed it to maybe I had conflicts about taking care of my daughter. I wasn't sure because I went to lift her up and I was like, why is my hand moving? You know, I went to my psychiatrist who I had been working with for a number of years. He knew me very well. Um, I said, you know, yeah, they did these tests and I demonstrated the finger tapping and he looked very alarmed. And I was like, that's not good. Why does he look so alarmed? And so I went and I actually Googled all my symptoms and all that came up was Parkinson's disease. After I was finally diagnosed, my neurologist who diagnosed me said, uh, you know, take charge of your disease. Don't let it take charge of you. And that was the best advice I've ever gotten. Um, he was a very stoic man and he didn't, you know, show a whole lot of compassion, but he gave me that advice. And he said, go to the World Parkinson's Congress. And it just so happened that that was happening in Montreal that only a few months away I packed up with a good good friend of mine and took my daughter we went to Montreal and we just had the most amazing time meeting people with Parkinson's getting a connections around the world that really have sustained me all this time really knowing that there was such a strong vibrant creative and funny Parkinson's community out there so my daughter has only known me with Parkinson's so I was diagnosed when she was nine months old and really it's just been interwoven into the fabric of her life. Um, you know, I try and make it something that is just, you know, a normal part of, of us. But also, we like to gang up on Parkinson's. We like to talk about how much we ate Parkinson's. We wish it would go away. It's not something that, you know, is is something that either of us want. And, and she gets frustrated, you know, when I can't do things that um, she wants me to do, or if I, my leg is against hers and and shaking she's like mom stop that stop that or if my handwriting is so illegible she's just like mom can you write more neatly you know she gets very frustrated but at the same time i think it's given her such a greater understanding and appreciation for people with disabilities people from all different backgrounds when biden was giving his acceptance speech we were watching it together i let her stay up late that night and um, and he was talking and he mentioned people with disabilities. We must make the promise of the country real for everybody, no matter their race, their ethnicity, their faith, their identity, or their disability. She turned to me and said, Mom, he's talking about you. And I just, I, you know, I just started crying. I mean, that was just so touching to me that both she recognized that and she knew that that was talking about me and that that was sort of, she was proud of that. For many years, Becca wrestled with the idea of having deep brain stimulation, DBS. So I just recently had DBS in September of 2021. So prior to DBS, I really felt such steep peaks and troughs in terms of my symptoms. I'm still in the process of adjusting and, and turning up the stimulation to find the best possible effect and, and try and uh, decrease some of my medications. But already I just feel that it's much more even. There's much more predictability in terms of how I'm going to be doing, there isn't the this like steep drop off, and um, and I just have more confidence that if I make plans, I'll actually be able to follow through on them. When she works, Becca transforms from patient to professor, and from seeking support to supporting others. In my professional life, I've been working with people with serious mental illness, 
And I have my own experience with serious mental illness. Um, right now, I'm the director of peer support, where these are folks who have their own experience providing support to others. So using your lived experience as a patient to really provide hope and strength and motivation to other people. And this is one of the things that I found has been so helpful in my journey with Parkinson's is, you know, providing support to others and receiving that support in a big, big way. Listening to the voice of the person who has the lived experience with the illness is so, so important. And we learn new things all the time, um, just in ways that will push the research forward. Even as an educated, you know, Parkinson's advocate, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be okay. I, I don't have to worry about this. It might, you know, being in the hospital. And I really had almost disastrous experiences with given, being given contraindicated medications, not being given my medications on time, being given the wrong medication. So it really was a challenge. And even when, after my first experience, I went in the second time thinking, well, this time I got it, I got it solved. You know, I can do it. It still happens. So these are really systemic issues that we need to come together as a Parkinson's community and advocate uh, along with the researchers and uh, the different foundations working on this issue to really make changes for people with PD. Dr. Miller has some wonderful advice if you have Parkinson's disease. Gain control over Parkinson's so it doesn't control you. You can do this through at least four different ways. One is by learning as much as possible about the disease. Hopefully Parkinson's TV can help. Two, by exercising vigorously, ideally at least an hour a day if you can. Healthy diet, avoiding pesticides and using filtered water and four, by surrounding yourself with a great care team. Surgical treatments for Parkinson's can be quite effective. Deep brain stimulation has been well studied and can be quite effective for a subset of individuals who have Parkinson's disease, but it's not without its risks. Up to about 20% of people who have deep brain stimulation can have an adverse effect, such as an infection or suboptimal placement, and that can complicate uh, the procedure. But if you've had Parkinson's disease, you're young, and our definition of young is under 75, you develop some complications from the medications, then you should talk to your uh, physician about whether surgical treatments for Parkinson's disease might be appropriate for you.